Dan, you're on. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm a member of this club now for my first year. I've been selling hardware for quite a while. Prior to it, I was selling board, and then prior to it, I was selling working for Formica Canada. I didn't know really what to do in terms of what to bring and so on. So the hinges, as you can see, there's more than one choice in hinges. But before we talk about the hinges, there is everybody knows Bloom. Everybody knows uh, you have Salici, you have Hattic, you have Grass. You have different companies. Now, anybody here does it as a professional, as part of their trade, or everybody is hobbyist? The thing with hinges, a company which supposedly is the most successful company around selling hinges is Bloom. Everybody knows Bloom, everybody heard about Bloom. The story is that Bloom is one of the best marketing company in the world. It's like when you go and you say, I'm going to have a Coke, and they will look at you and say, is Pepsi okay? That's what people really relate to it. Now, there's high quality hinges, and then there's obviously the Me Too. What determines a high quality hinge is the number of cycles. There's a standard in the world that the cycles are run with the hinges. In the old days, there were different type of uh, hinges, but today everybody seems to be moving into the European style type of hinges that we are talking about. And obviously, there's so many kinds that it's impossible to go all over them. Normally, on the commercial market, when people use gables, they use either five eighths of an inch or three quarters of an inch. The rule of thumb is that whenever you decide what type of hinge you're going to use, the gable determines what size plate you're going to use. So for ex yes, sir. Which part's the gable? I'm sorry, Mark. A gable is a box of the kitchen. Okay. Usually, when you look at the kitchen cabinet, you have a box and you have a door or a drawer. Most kitchens today are made from particle board with melamine type of a finish on it. People go into plywood type of boxes, which is fine, but you have to be careful what boxes you get because you don't know what adhesive was used in putting the plywood in and then you have omissions and different things that could happen. There's a lot of uh, a new trend, it's really not that new, but a lot of uh, cabinets are coming into Canada and North America as a rule from overseas. And a lot of times you don't know what materials it's made from. And people don't realize that, for example, if you have a particle board with melamine, it really is bonded together with material and the way the layers of the materials is made it's compressed and it's done and there's a certain emissions that comes out of it. So a lot of it would depend on the type of wood species that the particle board is made from. Now, we'll move from the foundation and we'll go up. Normally in the old days, if you recall, you look at the cabinet, you would have a kick plate or you have, is there a marker? Yep. If you look at the side view of a cabinet, that's usually a cabinet, and so on. The standards for cabinets, and usually what a lot of people do when they order, or at least supposedly the pros when they order it, or when you build a cabinet, you have to think what will be in that cabinet. So, for example, in the old days, what they used to do is they used to cut this on a table saw, put here a piece, and you have your kick plate, and usually the kick plate matched the door, and it was lovely. 
Today everything is being done with CNC, so basically you take a lift of material, you put it in front of the machine, and the CNC starts cutting the pieces. So what a lot of people do in uh, Europe, it started, they're using legs. So when you're looking at these legs, this usually is mounted on the bottom of the cabinet, so now your cabinet is basically like this. This will be mounted on the bottom of the cabinet. It's available in different configuration. And as we all know, all builders build 90 degrees walls, straight, water levels, are <laughs> I mean, I've never seen a crooked one yet. <laughs> but the reality of life is that things move. Obviously, we never have leaks. And life is perfect. So there's different ways of installing cabinets, closets, and so on. And you really have to think a little bit forward with it. The advantage of this is that when you use this type of a leg, in the old days what they used to do is they used to do, use what's called tack light. Sorry, I was told to put it here. So basically you build your box, you put your four tack lights in, you bring the box into the, wherever you're installing it, everybody drags it on the floor, of course it never done any damage or anything, but this is supposedly supposed to prevent any damage. Don't believe it, but it does. So what people do with this, they install it on the bottom of the cabinets, they're going to, this is plastic, it won't damage it, then this is adjustable. And then you have the clip for the kickboard. Now, what happens with something like this, it's very expensive. A unit like this. Before I go, just you know, what Dennis has done with me what we did for the clubs that if potentially later on you guys decide that you want to order some materials, Dennis will we'll put him on the spot and he'll tell us how he wants to do it. He just walked in, so he does, didn't hear what I said. But uh, I made an arrangement for this club to be able to purchase materials through the club, not individually. So if you decide to build anything or if you see anything, Dennis will let us know how he wants to handle it. Obviously, the pricing are going to be better than what you think. So anyway, this is done. It, it clips on the... and you have your kick plate on. In the old days, they used to nail it, glue it, name it, they did it. And then you have a flat, then you have something, so the whole cabinet goes kaput. The reason insurance companies and a lot of people prefer this method of legs is that now if you have a flood in the kitchen, the only thing you have to replace would be, at the most, is a kick plate. Because there's water underneath, it's also easy, there's air, and if God forbid you have mice or anything like this, the exterminator can come and put some goodies under the cabinet. It also allows you to adjust the level of the cabinet. And you know, if the cabinet is not level, when the countertop comes in, you have problems. So, now we have the cabinet installed. Now we have to look at the hinges. Hinges have two categories. The reason, obviously, I'm going to focus on the hinges that I sell, because I have an interest in it. But besides the point, this really, people will tell you there's a difference. Any hinge manufacturer that is legit will give you lifetime warranty on it. But there's a slight catch to it. You have to pay for the labor. The labor is usually one year or whatever the manufacturer will give you. But the beauty of it is that depends what brand hinge you use. When we look at the hinge, I'm going to use your yeah. gizmo. <laughs> 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 
What? He doesn't like hardware. What did you do? Put it on the shelf on the side. Okay. When you look at the hinge, what you have to really look at is center to center. Anything that we do in woodworking, as far as cabinetry is concerned, whenever you order a handle or decorative or anything like this, when you're going to say, I need, let's say, a 96 millimeter handle, it's center to center, not the overall length. The problem that a lot of people with old kitchens have is that in the old days, before metric came into Canada, it was imperial. So they'll come to me and say, do you have this handle is three and a half inches? I really don't want to change my kitchen. Those handles do not exist. So either they have to drill or they have to put a face plate or they have to do different things like that. Now, when we look at hinges, the cap size, which is this part, <laughs> cap size, and then you have center to center for the dowels. Now, a hinge is usually sold with dowels, with expansional. These dowels that you see there are press fit. We should go on the website to show the machine to drill them. Uh, then it sold. Those other hinges? You'll see the machines there, yeah. Okay. It sold what we usually, when we place an order online very quickly, we call it naked, meaning yeah. that you supply your own screws, you only drill the central hole for the cup, and that's it. Now, in my case, I sell the infinity hinges, and I sell the Salici line. The Salici line is made in Italy, just that you know Salici has been making hinges since 1926. It's a more established company in terms of being in business than Bloom, Hattic, or anyone else. As I said before, Bloom is a phenomenal company in terms of marketing, and that's why people tend to go there. Now. So everybody will call it a bloom, a bloom setting. Hattic, which is made in Germany, have their own setting. So if you have a machine that we'll see a machine later on what the pros use, with a lot of smaller shops who cannot afford the machinery or CNC, they use a drill press with a, a drill and they buy the hinge naked and put usually the wood screws into it and it's done. Now, when you look at hinges, yeah, and you know, you'll see the machine you had it up before, but just leave it on the first page. Uh, this is called this type of a hinge. Sorry, here we go again. This hinge, Bloom calls it Inserta, Salici calls it Logica. The name means nothing. It's basically a trade name. But if you look at both hinges, potentially, here you have a hinge where you can see the screw heads. Here you have a hinge which I say, it's very sexy. You don't see anything. Wow, it's amazing. The interesting part of this, let me have a screwdriver. Okay, when you look at this, and I can always speak on behalf of what I sell. It's really not fair for me to speak about other manufacturers that I don't represent because everybody has their own preference. So we're going to stick to what I deal with. But in principle, it's almost the same. Most doors, kitchen doors today, are made from 
the cheap ones are made from uh, particle board core, melamine, etch tape, done. Then you have the five-piece doors where you have a frame, 